Le 7 octobre dernier, On the 7th of October, Israel was attacked by a terrorist group, Hamas, avec, uh, and un bilan humain there was a very high uh, count of victims, touchés, and uh, we were concerned too, because 31 of our citizens lost their lives, de and uh, there were more than 200 hostages taken, including donc, some, some of our citizens. And uh, straight away, we realized that uh, Israel is allowed to respond. Uh, fighting terrorism isn't just one country. It's a question of international cooperation. And uh, we are still carrying out actions in the region. You remember that uh, uh, on, in Iraq, we lost some soldiers recently fighting the coalition for the coalition. And uh, right from the beginning, France said, Israel is allowed to defend itself in the framework of international law, and uh, the rest is a question of uh, humanitarian law. And when you uh, uh, want to fight uh, terrorists, it's very difficult to avoid um, uh, the civilians also being victims. And there have been such a intensive bombing of Gaza that the nature of the debate has changed. And there's the risk of uh, the whole region flaring up, going up in flames. And uh, in uh, with the humanitarian situation, our response uh, is um, uh, had to be adapted and to take into account the political background, the right of the Palestinians to have a state. So it has to be a global answer, which is uh, uh, the answer. Uh, to, there's the attack of Hamas. There's wanting to avoid an escalation. There's uh, the need to protect populations. And uh, the initiative for peace and security, which we proposed, uh, is based on three pillars that uh, go in parallel. First, combating terrorism. And uh, that is something we've um, already started doing against Daesh. Uh, so maybe we can use the experience we have. Um, maybe we don't need to uh, restart from scratch, and we can use that experience. Secondly, uh, with this experience, we want to build with all the states who are prepared to, uh, to uh, concur, anyone in the region and beyond to combat uh, Hamas, uh, to share information, to identify terrorists and to neutralize them. That's the first pillar. And why do we want to do that? Well, to tell Israel that they're not alone, to uh, be in the framework of international law and to have a targeted approach uh, so that uh, we can combat terrorism and protect populations. Uh, the second pillar for peace and security is protecting civilian populations. I started with that right from the beginning uh, when uh, I asked, uh, for example, for uh, the uh, water uh, system to be uh, reopened. Uh, it's uh, basic humanitarian uh, needs and uh, to reestablish uh, uh, power so that hospitals can function. And uh, I talked about this with um, Prime Minister Netanyahu. Uh, if we don't do this very quickly with the, the hundreds of victims of, of women who um, are giving birth every day, how are they going to do their hospitals? So we have to adapt the framework. Uh, this, block, this blockade has to be lifted. And we are working with Jordan and Egypt uh, to bring the uh, drugs and the help along. And uh, tomorrow, actually, a French aircraft is going to bring uh, some uh, medical supplies and drugs. And we're also going to move uh, a French ship we're going to set up, as I said, um, a hospital ship uh, on the mode of what we had done uh, during cure COVID. Uh, and so this is the way we're going to help the populations in the West Bank, and uh, particularly those who have very high uh, social and economic needs. And then uh, there's the third pillar, which is the political pillar. Uh, there's... Uh, 
a need for supporting what is uh, going on. And we have to take into account the public opinion. Uh, the cause is uh, the fact that the Palestinian problem was never solved. And um, there's a legitimate uh, right of the Palestinians to have a state and a territory. And uh, this uh, needs to be um, put on the table again. And uh, I think it should be done in parallel with the two other activities, because uh, uh, there's no reason why only violence uh, can be the solution. And I have discussed these matters with uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu and President uh, Herzog, and we're on the right path. We've got to now uh, formalize it. We've got to do everything we can to avoid uh, the uh, spiraling of violence. Ah, yeah, just to tell you, uh, we're not uh, planning on sending any French troops uh, to Gaza. We, uh, we're talking about exchanging information, cooperation, uh, the best way uh, to help people. And it's not at all to send any troops. We are not part of any form of escalation. Uh, tonight, uh, you've got operational uh, commitments from your uh, partners in Jordan and in Egypt. Uh, what did King Abdullah and uh, President Sisi propose for the coalition? And what do you think might happen afterwards to um, make this uh, action sustainable? Well, first, uh, on the humanitarian level, we're going to carry out uh, several humanitarian actions with Jordan, particularly as regards hospitals, and we're going to cooperate uh, with, uh, the, uh, with Jordan for the hospital that they manage in, uh, in Gaza. And uh, we're going to establish uh, airlifts to bring them uh, supplies and uh, medicine and even generators. So this is a very uh, concrete approach. And then with President Sisi, we talked about sending uh, the French hospital ship. On the security level, they are forms of cooperation uh, that uh, we're carrying out also with sometimes with Israel. Of course, there's a big sensitivity of, uh, about this topic, so I can't go into details. But I would like uh, all the channels uh, to stay open so that we can go on moving forward. And then uh, there's also cooperation as regards the uh, freeing of the hostages. And uh, thank you, Egypt. Thank you, Qatar, who are helping. We are trying to consolidate uh, uh, an agreement with Egypt uh, so as to extract uh, the uh, French uh, citizens who are in the Gaza Strip. There are about 50 of them, about uh, 100 uh, staff who work for our institutions and their families. So it makes a total of 170 people that we uh, want to be able to uh, bring out if uh, need be. And we're working with Egypt about on this topic, and we found an agreement. The aim of your coalition is first uh, to combat terrorism, and you've accused Hamas of being terrorist. Are you comparing uh, Hamas to Daesh? Is it the new Daesh? Is it a movement uh, uh, that you can negotiate with? Well, since 2008, uh, yes, uh, the European Union classified Hamas as terrorist. And we are only talking to the PLO, and uh, this is vital. And, uh, uh, we must separate OLP from Hamas, who committed the atrocities. Uh, we can't negotiate with a, a terrorist group. We can only fight them. And next to it, there's uh, the Palestinian organization, which represents uh, uh, Palestinians. And we have to move ahead and uh, carry out the political discussions. Are Hamas and Daesh the same? I'm not going to start drawing a map of the terrorist groups, but I'm just saying it is a terrorist group. It has a very different history from Daesh. It comes from somewhere totally different, but they have still committed a terrorist attack of uh, 
on a broad scale and it needs to be uh, combated. And uh, the, what happened before, the religious and political background are different, but they are still disqualified, so to say. I'm not going to give a hierarchy, uh, but I, uh, uh, what I'm saying is that they represent a danger for Israel and therefore for the Palestinian as well, because the Hamas are the ones who started this situation and which is escalating. And it is clear that uh, the Hamas leaders uh, don't mind at all about sacrificing their own lives, the lives of their fighters. I'm, I know the two types of terrorist groups are different. Uh, did you try and convince Israel not to launch a ground attack. Uh, the uh, Israel army is uh, not going to carry out uh, that sort of thing all by itself. Uh, what is your position? Are you asking Israel not uh, to uh, start a ground attack? I'm going to be very clear. It depends on the nature of what you call uh, an operation. Uh, France recognized that Israel has a right to defend itself and protect its own population, but it should be within the respect of civilian populations. If they intervene on the uh, ground and if they go and target a clear terrorist group uh, which is identified I, uh, it's their own choice. It's within uh, the definitions I gave. But if it's a massive attack which uh, jeopardizes the lives of all the civilian population, no, that is different because uh, it won't protect Israel in the long run. And it isn't compatible with the international law of protection of civilian populations. On the ship Tonnerre that left Toulon today, uh, what are they going to do locally? Are they going to take on board uh, the uh, injured people coming from Gaza? Uh, well, first, we're, going, we're sending equipment with this ship, uh, humanitarian equipment, um, drugs and equipment, supplies. And then we're going to talk to the Israeli and Palestinian authorities and the NGOs over there, and we're going to uh, decide how we organize uh, the um, treatment of patients with beds. Uh, is there a necessity? Should we take them on board? Uh, it's something which we're going to determine in uh, the days to come. Uh, we'll see what we can do and uh, what the best method is. Are uh, you hoping that uh, the hostages might be freed soon? I first, I would like to say again how uh, uh, much I feel for the hostages and uh, my uh, support to the families. And some of them have lost uh, their dear ones, and this was horrible. And I want to tell them that uh, they have all my uh, sympathy and support. And we're doing everything we can to get this to happen, the liberation. And, uh, I've uh, talked to, President, to Prime Minister Netanyahu and also uh, to uh, President Herzog. We have to free all the hostages. We're not going to discriminate one nationality and another. We're working very closely with Qatar and Egypt. We've got various sources of information which are giving us some hope that something might happen in the next hours, but I don't want to give the families any false hope. Every time the negotiations are very uh, delicate, and I can't give you details, but I can tell you we're working hard. Uh, it's uh, hour by hour, minute by minute, and we're going to do everything we can. We're really deploying all our energy. It's our priority. Thank you very much. The reaction of uh, King Abdallah and President Sisi. Yes, as I was saying, uh, I told you what uh, the uh, concrete points were where we made good progress. Uh, he himself uh, picked up the three pillars that I've named, and uh, they also committed to fighting terrorism. They also uh, committed 
related to uh, humanitarian action. They also have to act uh, uh, to manage a lot of um, uh, complicated currents in their country. And the visit uh, was an interesting opportunity to um, uh, find out what is in common and condemning terrorism is something we all share. The security response has to be both uh, humanitarian and political. Uh, we need to uh, bring uh, a, a convergence about on these two points and bring about also international cohesion. I felt that they were uh, very concerned and uh, they uh, want to respect some of the rules of security, so I can't go too far uh, in revealing uh, the exchanges, but uh, I can tell you that we're all concerned about uh, slowing down an irreversible escalation if, it, if uh, it were the case. So first we need to uh, work on the three pillars and maintain uh, peace and security as much as possible and also avoid extremism in any form. I hope I've answered your questions. Thank you.